What's up, Indies? Circa here, and I haven't been doing YouTube videos for about the last year and a half. Not really. And so I'm getting back into it, and I'd like to start off quickly by giving you guys as much value as I can. I'd like to now present to you the top 10 ways to fail as an artist, whether you're a musician, a painter, comedian, TikTok influencer, whatever. is because I was inspired by Alex Hormozzi, who was also inspired by Charlie Munger. Charlie Munger thinks in the inverse. So instead of thinking about how to succeed as an artist, he would think about how to fail as an artist and sort of reverse engineer the right things to do. Number one, don't interact with fans. Whenever someone shows appreciation for your music, if someone likes you at a show or they're really engaged with you online, don't talk to them. Don't learn why they like you, don't learn about them, don't show them any love whatsoever, and you can be sure that you'll get less fans over time, that anyone's interests you do bring in, you never really communicate with them at the level they need you to communicate with them to go deeper, and so you can be sure that you will have zero fan base, which is also one of the surefire ways to fail as an artist, is to just never get fans. The people who succeed the most are people who even at this most busy part of their journey, they still communicate with the people who support them. So if you want to fail, definitely don't do that. Number two, expect someone else to achieve your goals for you. Expect that a manager or a label or some kind of operator is gonna come along and fall so in love with your music that they're willing to risk their entire lives or tons of capital on you, even though you're just not really great at doing things yourself because you expect someone else to do that. And maybe I'd add on to that, just like, don't ever do anything that isn't super comfy and fun to do. Don't engage in any activities that are boring or basic or challenging or hard or where you have to learn something, just don't do it. And then number three is kind of closely tied to number two. Make yourself completely dependent on others. Don't know what's going on in the business, don't know what's going on with your fan base, don't know what's going on with your release schedule. Just be like a baby and they're like your mom. High tier operators do not want to work with people who are not also similarly motivated. And this way you can be sure that any success you do gain, you will certainly lose because you're completely dependent on some third party like a label or a manager or a handler and you have no self-efficacy whatsoever. So all you gotta do is just wait for them to get bored of that and leave and then you'll definitely fail. Number four, only do things that you can't repeat. If you're gonna release music, only release these big tentpole albums that there's no fan base for, spend all your budget on it, don't test it whatsoever, and just blow the whole album in one go in such a way that you couldn't possibly get back up and do that right over again. Because the more at-bats you have at doing something successful as an artist, the higher likelihood that you're actually going to hit something out of the park, or that you're going to discover something that makes future attempts better. And so if you wanna fail as an artist, definitely have as few at-bats as you possibly can. Make these big, unsustainable projects that you haven't built up the work capacity for, and that just kill you at every level of your being every time you go out to do them. That way you'll definitely fail every time you do one of those things, and you won't be able to get back up and try again with what you learned in that failure. And that's a great way to fail. Number five, never sell anything. If you think about it, you're an artist, which means you are a business owner. This has to generate revenue and it has to generate revenue from people who probably believe in your music, fans or maybe a third party, a partner, a, a deal you do, whatever. There needs to be people who believe in your music and believe in you. If you want to be sure that you fail as an artist, never generate revenue from them by offering them something. Never make an offer, never sell, never create a product. Just sit there and hope and pray that the mere fact that your master recording exists is going to generate you all the wealth that you ever need in your life. And if you do actually fall backwards into selling something, make sure that it's the lowest value opportunity vehicle that you can possibly find. Like price all your albums at like $9. Price all your t-shirts for like basically at cost. So that's number five, never sell anything. Number six is don't reach out to anyone. Just be terrible at outreach. Don't even send email one, don't make call one. Definitely don't be good at outreach. Definitely don't be good at follow up and definitely get super discouraged anytime you happen to try outreach and it doesn't work immediately. And that way you can be sure that you never learn anything about how a sync licensing department works or never get management that actually works really well with you or never get a booking agent or never actually self book a venue.
Never do any of those things. Number seven, assume you already know how to achieve all your goals. Everything you need to go from, I just started making music or I don't have a fan base yet to superstar that it's already in your own head and you don't have to improve in any way in terms of your knowledge set. Because not only do you have to learn things about business and you have to learn things about how finances work and how things are sold and bought online and how to generate revenue, you also have to learn tons about being an artist that's very specific to our passion our journey. So never pay someone for their advice. Never seek out an opportunity to skill up from people who have done it before. Just never learn because you already know it, right? So why would you learn? And you'll definitely fail as an artist. You'll, you'll never do better than you're currently doing. Number eight is only ever put out music. And when you do, make it very little music and very infrequent. Don't ever try to put out video content or text content. Never put out anything that is any form of communication with the world besides your music and make sure it's it's very infrequent. If you put out a video or you put out like a text post or you started getting an email list and you started talking to your fans, if you were to do any of those things, people might remember you and they might actually discover more that you've put out. If you put out a lot, that's going to be a lot to go through and then they might care about you and they might want to know more things about you and they might want to follow you. God forbid, they might want to buy something from you or support your career in any way and that would definitely make it harder to fail as an artist. Artists, so only ever put out music and refuse to put out any other form of content or communication. Number nine, don't have any money or time to invest into growth. This is a surefire way to fail as an artist. You will definitely fail if you make sure that, that whatever you're doing otherwise in your life doesn't generate any excess capital. And that way you have nothing to invest into growing your own artistic business. And that includes learning. Like definitely don't have money to invest in coaching or courses or even even time to just read blog articles or watch YouTube videos like this one. Don't ever invest into becoming better or into getting a larger fan base. I would say one of the one of the surefire ways to grow a fan base is to start investing both time and money into doing so. And if you do that, you know, it's pretty hard to not grow because whatever you suck at, you're going to get better at. And then once you get better at it, you're going to grow. And so if you want to fail as an artist, you have to invest zero time and money. And that goes back to if you have some kind of nine to five that's generating the income for you. And I mean, even if you're making 30 or $40,000 a year, make sure that everything you do in your life costs more than that. Instead of buying groceries and cooking for yourself and finding meals that you can cook really quickly so it doesn't eat into your time, make sure you eat out all the time, use DoorDash, Uber Eats, do all those things. And then number 10 is, Never change. Literally, whatever you're doing right now that has landed you where you currently are in your artistic career, don't change any of it. Don't look for ways in which you're being inefficient or you're not growing or ways that you could be better. Don't look at what other people are doing that has helped them get over the specific hump that you're trying to get over and, and then apply it to your own career. Don't do any of that. If you never change anything that you're doing, you'll just flatline and plateau where you currently are, and you can let the rising tide kind of catch up with you and then, and then put you underwater. If you are doing something that works, stop doing it. So stop doing the things that have ever had any shadow of success, and then definitely don't change any of the things that you've done over and over and over again, and they just never really advance you. And those are, I think, 10 surefire ways to fail as an artist. I think that will definitely make sure that you just languish in obscurity forever. Now, the inverse of that would be interact with every single fan who reaches out to you in any way. Show them love. Expect nobody else to achieve your goals for you. And guess what? It's not that far off from the truth, because when a label comes along, they're not going to do shit for you. Their main goal is to find an artist that is so mass marketable that they can throw them on billboards and throw them on big budget media and branding campaigns, and they're going to appeal to everybody. And when they find that person, it pays for all the people who aren't that, who they tried that style of marketing with, and your likelihood of success is incredibly low when you sign up with a label. Make yourself completely independent of others. Make sure that if someone's a high value to you in your operation as an artist, artist, like a partner or a manager or someone like that, that you know what they should be doing more than they do. That doesn't mean that you should be doing everything and it doesn't mean that you should never seek out these people. It means that you should be seeking them out for a very specific reason and if it's not them, it's someone else and you know who you're looking for. You know what you want out of every single deal and you know the appropriate cost for it and you're not paying more and you're especially not giving away percentages of your money to get this vague promise. 
Number four, only do things you can repeat. And that's gonna give you a lot of at-bats and that's going to allow you to get better at it over time. And that's why I love advertising because it's a very real and tactile sort of feedback. It's, it's a quick feedback loop. I can put out some content in an ad and I'll immediately know based off the costs that are coming in, how much I'm paying for someone to click over to Spotify or how much I'm paying for someone to sign up for my email list so I can diagnose them quickly and I can iterate off that and find things that work better. Number five, sell stuff. Most artists think they don't have to get good at sales because they assume the label's gonna do that. And labels are terrible at sales. 100% the worst. I mean, I can't tell you how much value was lost in the times that we sold out of a label's inventory and they, they took months to replace it. Labels are not good at sales because it's not the type of marketing they employ. They have no direct response experience. So they have no actual experience selling something. They're much better at selling an image, selling a feeling to the world than they are at selling a product. And that's no knock on them because it's very difficult to do and they are able to succeed at it sometimes. But at the end of the day, a label is not going to sell these things for you. A manager is not going to sell these things for you and promoters for sure are not gonna sell things for you. One of the members of our team sold out a tour using digital marketing and had to pay a promoter 50% of their revenue and the promoter did nothing. The promoter didn't sell any tickets, they sold them. Most of the artists I know of who are already sort of blowing up that aren't successful at selling and don't know how to offer products are making very little money. And I'm talking about like less than $1,000 a month from the label, despite the fact that they're like media darlings right now. So definitely you wanna be good at turning your influence and your audience and your reach and your impact into money by selling. You wanna be good at that if you wanna succeed as an artist. Number six, reach out to people. Learn the game of outreach, the game of follow-up. It's super important. Finding a contact in a company who's relevant to what you're looking for and then finding their email address and then reaching out to them and then following up and following up and following up and following up and then getting in contact but then it goes cold and you have to follow up and follow up and then getting back in contact most of the people that you ever get in contact with it will take more than one outreach assume that you do not have the knowledge currently to achieve any of your goals and that you'll have to learn chances are there's things you don't know that you will have to learn and you will have to apply there should be zero delay between when you learn how to do something or you learn a new avenue to explore and you start trying it and applying it. Learn from people's mistakes. People who have already gone through it and done all of the hard work and you can just learn what they know. That's super important. Put out tons of music frequently and then put out other stuff frequently. So not only put out music, but put out content, long form content, short form content, text, images, videos, put out all of it. And I don't mean kill yourself, but what I mean is you're going to need to get over the hump of I can't do all this, it's too much capacity. And that's gonna take you sitting down and figuring out what can I do in a given week based on my current life. That which is measured improves, that which is measured and tracked improves exponentially. Number nine, have money and time to invest into not only learning how to do this whole music career thing better and how to grow better, but also into the actual growth and getting better itself. I should live at the lowest possible expenses I can so that I can save the most money and invest the most into learning and applying what I learn. And so that's what I'm doing and, and I think it's a, a great idea for any artist out there. Change as often as you need to as a person and as an operator and as an artist in order to shake loose some success. Chances are I'm not the person I need to be to grow this movement from 10,000 artists into a million artists. Chances are I'll have to change as a person in order to do that. Chances are I'm not the person I need to be in order to grow my group, Some Kid Punk, from 5,000 Instagram followers and 25 to 45,000 monthly listeners to millions. I need to change as a person in order to get there because it's something that I haven't done for myself before. And so I have to change my expectations and my beliefs and my attitudes towards myself as an artist in order to get them. Super important for being able to succeed as an artist. And that's just any business owner. So I know this video was long, but I certainly hope that it was helpful. And I hope that it inspires you to start changing. Start changing tomorrow because that's what I'm gonna be doing. And I hope you'll join me. I've been Circa for Entrepreneur.io. If you wanna learn about how to tackle the marketing and the business side of your artistic career, something that our company has done for over five years and we've done for artists of every size, then I highly recommend that you join our Indie Pro community and start learning. And if you like this video, please like and subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next video.